Happy Sabbath, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the Kelvin on Athol Adventist Church, Seventh day Adventist Church. My name is Busisiwe Ngomalo, and today we will be discussing with the ladies um, the importance of ministering through your profession. As the Kelvin on Athol Seventh day Adventist Church uh, Women's Ministries, we carry a very special mission, and that is to uplift Jesus Christ in all that we do. Our responsibility as a department is to nurture, empower, and outreach as well. And this is why our theme for 2020 is Unleashing the Queen Within Me. And this was informed by the Bible character Esther, the queen in the book of Esther. And when we read the book of Esther uh, 4 verse 14, it reads as follows. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that is why today I'm having these young, beautiful ladies to empower us and to give us the tools on what the tools we need to be able to minister through our professions in different organizations. By virtue of being a woman, the gift of influence is infused within us. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 reads as follows, whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there's neither working no planning, no knowledge, no wisdom. The Bible is actually encouraging us here to excel in everything that we do. And we have these young women who are going to tell us how they have excelled in their different professions. Uh, we are going to be talking about the, the, the importance of ministering through your profession, whether there is a correlation between your education or profession and ministry and why is self-development important particularly for young women but before i introduce my panel i would like for us to close our eyes in prayer lord in the name of jesus would like to thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to come and present to you um, and to the church as well we pray god that all the viewers who are watching this program may be touched and may be empowered. But God, we pray that when all is said and done, your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so in introducing my panel up front here, I have Sizo Msipa. Hi. Sizo Msipa is, um, was born in Cape Town and was raised in Pretoria. She went to the University of Pretoria, where she has obtained her honors degree in food sciences. She is a Golden Key member and currently working at an FMCG company um, as a senior research and development technologist. She is 27 years old. She is ambitious and she is driven by a passion for people as well as leadership. She is a lady who loves adventure, she loves to travel, and she loves nature. Welcome, Sizo. Thank you for having me. And right next to Sizo, we have Linda Lozungu. Linda Lozungu is from Durban, um, grew up in the township called Lamontville. Uh, she has been in Joburg for the uh, past five years. She is the eldest of two girls. She has a BCom Honours Degree in Marketing Management, a Certificate in International, um, international Business, and a Postgraduate Certificate in Sourcing and Supply Chain. She also holds an MBA from Mencosa Business School. She is a brand manager at, at one of the biggest restaurants group in the country. Uh, she likes spending time with her family. She enjoys snuggling um, with a good book or binging on services. Um, she has developed a new passion, and that is of graphic design. And she is a night owl. She gets more work done 
at night. Thank you for joining us, Lindy. Thank you for having me. And our last panel is Ngobi Lengwenya. Ngobi Lengwenya is also from KZN. She is a PK. Uh, she moved to Joburg. Uh, she has been in Joburg for the past three years now. She is an admitted attorney um, fo focusing on forensic investigations. Um, she has, um, she's enjoying the dangerous life um, of being a forensic investigation attorney. A fun fact about her is that she tries to get out of her comfort zone as much as possible. And what she has done um, was to scuba dive or go into scuba diving with a sharks in an open sea. Thank you for joining us, Nobile. Thank you so much. So ladies, I would like for us to have a conversation. Um, I want us to talk about self-development. We live in a society where young women say, what is the point of me going to school and developing myself academically um, when, the, when there's a high unemployment rate in South Africa? Why should I go to school when I can just use my beauty and just be beautiful and um, use that as a business? Why is it important to go to school? Why is it important to self-develop yourself as a young woman who is also a Christian? I believe uh, you're the only person who can develop yourself without hidden agendas. Developing yourself opens up for opportunities as well. And in as much as you can use your beauty for money, you also need to understand how you'll do that to the best of your ability. So going to school teaches us critical thinking. Investing in yourself also gives you logic in different spheres of life as well. And all of that knowledge comes through education and developing yourself personally. I cannot stress the importance of education because as we know, beauty and everything else fleets after a while when you grow older. Um, so it, it's important for you to have that backup plan to know that if this won't work, this business um, won't work, then I, I know that, 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 that I have um, a, a, a backup plan. So it also helps to expand your mind. The world is, 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 is moving at a f f f fast pace, so you have to move with it. Um, I cannot stress enough the importance of, of, of growing. Even as we are, are here, we still want to learn more and, and get more, more uh, education as well. Yes, that's very true. Um, the world is forever changing. We are seeing new things that we've never seen 10 years ago. We now know things of drone. We have cell phones that can take pictures, cell phones that you can sit there and be in a meeting with without even being physically at the office. So everything around us is growing. Why not you? Okay. So to someone who's, who is sitting at home and saying, why should I go to school when I can actually climb up the corporate ladder, ladder by slipping my way to the top? What, what do you say to that person? For me personally, I never want to achieve or succeed in life the wrong way. Um, those that have caught, oh, climbed up the corporate ladder using suspicious means have never stayed there. You don't want to ever find yourself looking back and saying, you know, had I worked a little harder, had I actually put effort into my life and um, my work, certain things wouldn't have happened to me. I want to be on the top of the corporate ladder and say it was all me. Nobody contributed to that. I didn't have to lie or cheat or sleep my way to anyway, but it was all me through the grace of God. Mm. And that actually won't last because um, you won't work in one company. You have to move around. So you can't sleep here and, and sleep there and sleep there. Um, so I think it's important to know that it's, it's not the way to go. It's never the way to go. And also, it speaks to how we were raised. I think if, if you're raised in a, a good Christian home and you know that, 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 that hard work pays off as opposed to slipping away to the top. So it's, it's never, it, it might be, it might work now, but it, it, it won't work in the future or all the time. Yeah. And I think looking at our current um, situation as a country, we've had the highest retrenchment um, in many years, and there's auditors. So these things do get audited. People do come around once again, and they'll be like, okay, you're in this position. Let's see how you got here. 
So you don't want to have to find yourself in that position where you've got nothing to show for yeah. why or for why you're here and how you got here as well. So the truth will always come out. Okay. Um, so the Bible beats us to love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our strength, and with all our mind. And for the, for the purpose of this discussion, I would like us to focus more on the mind. Because we live in a society where uh, people just generally don't want to think. Um, they, 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 they want to be consumers of everything. They want to be consumers of everything. And in the book, Education, we're actually encouraged to, 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 to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other people's opinion. As a young woman, what would you say about this statement? That we have been given a power to be thinkers um, and not just mere reflectors of other people's opinions. Because as I've said, the society that we live in glorifies loyalty, glorifies being loyal, blind loyalty, if I may put it so. They don't want to think. But as young women, we can make a difference by being thinkers, as we have been given the power by God. What would you say about being thinkers and not mere reflectors of other people's opinions? I think it's important that you're able to think on your, on your own, by yourself, be able to investigate things, like why is this done like this, why not like that? Also, what, what, what um, I think as a person who has a, a master's, you get to a point where you have to critically analyze what does this mean? I won't just accept it because it's been done in this way. Um, I think also, grow up in the Adventist when we, we know we must always read and find out why is it like this and not that. Even at work, there are it, you've got um, ways of, 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 of work, but um, you have to speak up and, 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 and say, but I don't agree with this. You know, it's, it's wrong, it's not ethical. Yeah. And where does that put you when you start questioning things as a young professional in your organization? I think also, it's how you ask and how you um, approach the matter, like especially if you want to effect change. Because I believe that when you start thinking and actually start questioning things, that's the only way you go about effecting change. So especially when you're a newcomer, no one really wants to um, listen to you and you're just full of ideas because you come from a different sphere, I mean, you're fresh out of varsity and you're just like, oh my goodness, we can do things like this, like this, like this. So I think even before questioning things, it's also important to understand why they are being done like that in the first place. And then once that has been understood, then you can go about effecting your change and getting to question the things that people haven't um, thought about in a very long time. For me, it's also uh, important to understand for yourself why certain things are the way they are. Um, so we've got examples of at work, but also for me, for instance, if I'm in my social life, if you're my friend and you come and tell me you don't like Ulindi, and I just, okay, fine, I'm not going to be friends with Ulindi, it just doesn't make sense. And everything you need to investigate for yourself, look at the reasons why this person has said what they said, but look at the facts and how they apply to you. And if that's something in Bella that you don't um, go along with, then take those steps to then investigate and say, but Lindy, are there certain reasons why you act this way? Or why would somebody say that you're not a good person? So in everything, it's important to always have your own understanding of the facts, whether you're at work or your personal life. And then my second question is, um, as young women, um, God wants us to develop our intellect. And in so doing, that we may know him and love him as our creator. So I would like to know from you ladies, as you were going through the journey of acquiring your different qualifications, um, how have you come to know God and how have you come to love him as your creator? Um, I think for me, um, ending up uh, where, 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 where I am in the restaurant industry you know there was no way I could have dreamt that for myself I, 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 I've never even imagined you know even the company I did not even know while I was still at home I think what I know now is that nothing happens outside of God 
So God is the one that opens the way for us, that paves the way for us, that this is the path that I've created for you and it's your path alone, it's not hers or um, your brother's. You know, so I think in, in, in my work, I've learned even at work, even in business as well, I, I know God is the one who gives us the orders, who gives us the contract, who gives us um, work that we have. So nothing happens outside of him more than anything. Okay. I've seen God in my career from the beginning. You know, there's so many instances or um, examples I can give you where God has stepped in when I really didn't know where my next step would be. Um, one of the first instances was when I was debating whether I wanted to do articles or not. Um, I got to a stage where I'm like, okay, let me just do articles, and I started applying. You know, sometimes you see job posts that you're like, I'm way qualified for this, but even that, they don't even call you for. I went through that phase for months where I was just applying and wasn't even getting a response at all. Not even, we regret to inform you. Um, I got to a point where I was very depressed and I just thought maybe this wasn't for me. But in one instance, my father, who's a pastor, was preparing um, his marriage registration books because there was some couple that was going to come get registered. Um, when preparing for that, the man came with his wife and he started talking about how he has a law firm. And... Um, you know, we started talking and I told him, no, you know, I also have an LLB and I've been looking for, you know, opportunities and trying to do my articles and whatnot. It didn't even last more than two or three minutes. And that was it. A week later, the same man then called and said, you know what, if you want, you can come do articles at my firm. Wow. That to me was God. Wow. I went looking through different doors um, for this opportunity, but God said, you know what, I'm going to bring your door, your opportunity to your door. And it literally came through the front door at home. So that to me was God. Amen. Cecil? And for me personally, I have a testimony. I mean, my parents wanted me to do engineering and I didn't. I wanted to do food science and I had an opportunity from Anglo-American and I had to do an aptitude chest, which was on Sabbath. And yeah, being the only Sabbath keeping uh, child at home, I was forced to go, at, but I just couldn't go through ahead with it. And I had applied for two bursaries at the time, one for the food science um, journey and the one for the engineering one. And I just walked away from the test or the examination that was in progress. And I turned it down and I was also rejected on the food science one. And I was just, I was torn. I was like, Lord, but you know, I, I said no to this because it was on Sabbath and I believe um, in keeping the Sabbath. And to cut the long story short, they had rejected me and then like eight months later in my first year, they then sent me an email to, to congratulate me for getting the bursary because the person that they had initially given it to had turned it down. So I've seen, I've seen God's hand from the beginning um, of my journey in this career. Well, so you can all attest that God is a provider and God has developed your intellect so that you can know him better and to love him better. Can Definitely. you all agree? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to add as well, God is not just the God for the Sabbath. Like he's your God from Monday to Friday and mm. he is concerned what you do on a Monday. Whether you wake up, you know, every single thing, he's, he's, he's concerned with every aspect of your life. Amen. True. Amen. Yeah. Um, welcome to Kelvin on Athol Seventh-day Adventist Church. I uh, would like to encourage you to leave your comments and your questions on our Facebook page. Um, ladies, let's talk about character. There is a famous quote that says, talent will get you in the door, but character will keep you in the room. And having said that, character is powerful, or character is power. And it is said that a less developed mind will always lead to a less developed character. So I would like to know from you ladies, what are some of the character traits that you have developed um, in pursuit of your qualifications or in trying to attain your qualifications? I think um, just ambition, ambition goes a long way, you know. Um, we can all be marketers, but um, people will know if you're ambitious about what you do. Passion as well, I think, for me, in, in our line of work, because there's no opening and closing time. So passion really goes a long way. Um, I'm able to answer emails at night, at, um, at odd hours of the night, because I have that passion and the drive to do the work. You know, I think um, those two things will stand out for you. So also, what's important is that 
when you're given a job or when you're given a task, go above and beyond. Don't just do the bare minimum or tick a box. Because people know that this report, mm -mm, it was done the night before. So you must always um, go above and beyond and know that whatever you you do, it reflects on you as a person and also other people which um, look up to you as well. Yeah. So you have learned excellence. Excellence. Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, I've learned the importance of servant leadership. Uh, it's a character trait that came early on my my journey with the corporate world where you just put yourself out there to to do the things that you're not paid to do. Just putting yourself there in, with different people, acting with, interacting with different people from different departments, understanding their role in the corporate and also how it links to yours as well. For me, has, it has opened my eyes to even understand better how the business is run, the importance of my role to this company that I'm working for. So it has servant leadership as well, being a leader, being respectful, and even through the journey, I've also learned that respect is given in the corporate world, it's not earned. Mm -hmm. So you, you respect everyone from the cleaner to the CEO. For me, it's also important to then tailor yourself for that profession. For me, um, being in the legal and the forensic aspect um, fields, it's important to be a person of truthfulness and to be a person of integrity and honor. Mm -hmm. if, if I conduct my investigation in such a way that you can't then question my results, then, that, then I've done my work. Because you'll always wrap people up the wrong way. But if I've acted with integrity and I've done everything above board in my excellence, in the manner that um, I can then be proud of the report, then no one can then question me later. I also want to add and say, uh, be proactive because this is your life, this is your future. So ask the questions, knock on those doors because no one will give you what you don't ask for. Viewers at home, I'm sure you can attest that I'm sitting with m the most powerful young women here with me. Um, so um, that leads me to my third question. So of every Christian, the Lord requires growth, efficiency in our lives, and in all spheres of our lives, be it emotionally, physically, uh, in all aspects of our lives. God wants us to, to, to excel in everything that we do. But we cannot excel without having to sacrifice some of the things and perhaps deny ourselves some of the things and also go through some painful efforts in trying to attain whatever goal that God has set for us. So I would like to know what, what um, self-sacrifices you've had to make in your journey as a young professional. No? Um, one of my favorite quotes says that if you want to do something that other people haven't done, you have to start doing things that others won't do. So um, that means sacrificing, for instance, if people going out, that means then I'm going to stay in and rather study. That means if I have to work all night long to make sure that my reports is correct and um, you know, no spelling errors, the smallest things really, um, that, that to me is worth that self-denial. That Instead of going out, let me study. Instead of um, you know, wake up an extra hour earlier just so you can get more work done. So later I can then be more proactive and say, you know what, I've done that work that you asked me to do. What else can I help you with? That self, um, you know, just being proactive with your life. You can't just sit there and do everything else and still think, do everything else that everyone else does and then still think that you'll stand out. Yeah, definitely. I've had to sacrifice money um, because of the Sabbath. There are jobs that I've been offered and I didn't accept them because it would require me to work on the Sabbath. So from luckily on an, from an early age, um, or early stage rather, of my Christian journey, I've made and accepted the fact that God is my provider and money comes and goes. So he's, he's always been faithful in, in catering for me financially. So I've never really had to, it, it, when you look at the pay slip, it's almost like, ah, but that's what I've had to sacrifice and it's been worth it. I have no regret. Um, I think as Ungno spoke about this, uh, socially, there are a lot of things that happen. I mean, we're young people, we want to be active out there, you know, meeting with people and our lifestyles. Um, when I was studying for my MBA, like I've always been a bookworm, but when I was studying for my MBA, that's when I really felt it, you know, like I need people because I live alone and I need my friends over, 
a weekend. But I couldn't do that because my MBA was staring me in the face every single day. So my weekends were literally just done because yeah. I had to come here at church and then I had to go home and study and work on the, 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 the MBA. So I think more than anything, we've all had to not write Nisabata because we just can't, you know, other people say, I'll, I'll, I'll fund in when I get about It's like, no, I, I, I can't. So um, it's, it's those things that have helped us also stand out as well, because yeah. also meant to go to Ige, now I can't get a 50, yeah. because mm. they've made cool. this for, 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 for me. So, so, so now I have to make sure that I, 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 I rise above. Yeah, definitely. And it's yeah. important. Those few hours on the Sabbath to study are important. And people, so you, you take it lightly, but it's, it's a big sacrifice on our part. Mm -hmm. But we know at the end of the day, God will always come through. Yeah. But I think I like, I like your point, Lindy, that if you can't go to, 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 to school on Sabbath, then you can't afford to get a, a 50%. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you have to stand out, yeah. you know, as a young uh, professional. Yeah. So you wanted to say something? No, I'm just uh, reiterating what Lindy is saying. I completely agree. You need to stand out simply because they look at it as a disadvantage. Mm. Yeah. So you need to make it look like it's not a disadvantage. Actually, it's an advantage to me to keep the Sabbath. Yeah. And God will never leave you hanging, hey? Yeah. Never, ever. Yeah. 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 That's very powerful, ladies. Um, and then my next question is that the Lord desires us to, to obtain all the education possible. And for, 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 for one reason, so that we can be able to impart the knowledge to others and draw men to him. Yeah. So the question I have for you is, why is it so difficult for young professionals to lead um, others to Christ? They find it easier to lead in the corporate world, to give direction to people, but they find it very difficult to lead others to Christ. Why is that? It's important not just to know, to have the knowledge, but to actually act upon the knowledge. If I know that I have to love my neighbor as I love myself, it's important then that I love my colleagues as well at work. It's hard to then, if I don't preach what I am, then my life won't be able to bring someone else to God. If I, you shouldn't be able to speak God, they should be able to see God in my life. But if I don't act in that in, in a in a Christian manner at work, then it won't be very easy for me to then come to Busi who are shouting at earlier for something that really didn't wasn't that big of a deal, to then come to tell her like, you know what, you should come to me, come with me to church tomorrow. It's it's very different things. It's the way we behave that then will um, translate to how I bring a person to church. Yes, um I fully agree with that. I think it's behavior more than anything. The reason why you can't convince people to come to church with you is because they don't see this God um, at work. And also, I think in, in corporates, you would find that the F word is used very loosely, you know, in meetings and everywhere. So people see how, 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 how you speak and how you handle things and how you handle um, even fights at work and conflicts, you know. So how you're able to um, speak to others, speak to people that um, are under you, um, speaks a, 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 a lot about you as a person and also as a Christian. Yeah. I think it's easy in the corporate because at the end of the month, everyone needs to get paid. <laughs> so I, it's easier to lead in the corporate because we're there at the end of the month, everyone gets paid and it's easier to take instructions from, from your, the authority there. And I agree with the ladies when they say that when it then comes to then leading people to Christ, your life should be the biggest sermon um, that, that, that is there for people to watch. And also cultivating the patience with people because when I look at how or where rather God took me from, it was not an overnight business. So you need to be patient with people and allow them to see the Christ in you rather than preaching the Christ to them. I think also to add, respect goes a long way. Whether it's a mama or cleaner or kitchen, whether it's a baba or gaitin, whether it's um, um patwako, but respect everyone and anyone goes a very long way. Yeah. yeah. Um, now let's deal with the, with the elephant in the room before we conclude our discussion. Um, so is it true that young professional women find it hard to keep relationships? Or rather, to get a man and keep relationships. How true? Um, it's, it's very true. And I think everyone that knows me knows that I'm single. 
<laughs> and why? Still. Based on the fact that you based very on the fact that orientated. I, I work all the time. There's yeah. literally hardly no time where I'm like I'm not doing anything today. Like I'm I'm chilling. I'm going out and, and I'm going to relax. There is really no time. So it's it's very true that it's it's harder to find a partner when you are older or more advanced in your career because um firstly you don't want just anyone. Okay, you want a person who's going to complement you, not who's going to be your provider, but they must be able to match your life and your lifestyle as well. So it, 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 it has been harder in that aspect, and I must say that standards um, have, have been a, a biggest thing because I'm not going to go for anyone. Even when you approach me, you must have your story straight, you know, because you're not just speaking to anyone. Got you. And then, <laughs> and then intimidates men as well because you know who you are. Um, I have my career. I don't need you. It would be nice if you if I have you there. But again, if you're not there, I'm, I'm, I can still eat at in the evenings. I don't need you for anything. So you can eat out, darling. I can I can take myself <laughs> out. I don't need someone to take me out. Okay, Cesar. What about you? Uh, I think for me the challenge in the workplace is that you know you have a lot of eligible eligible bachelors at in the workplace in as much as they're also eligible bachelors in the church. And you spend most of your time at work and you probably develop uh, what they, they call work husbands as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the struggle with my personal experience is that when you come to church, you assume that because the brothers in the church, there's a lot of, there's certain boxes that have already been ticked, you know? Um, and whereas you, you then meet these eligible bachelors at work and they're good people and the only difference is that you don't believe in the same denomination or you don't believe in the Sabbath, both of you together. Whereas when you put them on the platform, really what I've learned is that you should both ask the men the question, are you a man of God? Are you a man of prayer? You know, Do you know who your creator is? Are you able to lead me as your partner and inspire me to reach the goals that God has given me from birth? Because we are all born with certain things that we're supposed to achieve, God-given. And the person that, like Ulin is saying, are you going to compliment me? So I think we're really harsh on, um, we like to refer to them as the Philistines, um, those who are, not, who are not in the church. And, and we are lenient with the brothers in the church because we believe that they already come with a certain package of which I found is not true. Yeah. Not yeah. All right, I, I wanted to speak more about the challenges that you face as young professionals, but time is not on our side. If you could teach someone or if you could teach your younger self one thing mm. today, what would it be? Or if you were to teach someone who is watching on Facebook right now one thing, what would it be? I think you, 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 you touch on this already. Being a young black woman in, 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 in SA right now, it's, 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 it's very hard, you know? People look at you like, are you capable? Can you do this job? Are you sure? When you do anything, it's like, you did this, you know? So it, it, it's still there. It exists. So what I can say to other young people is that, is, is that um, I'm going to quote you, or the Bible rather, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, you know, because that will show. If you do anything with the person and the zoo and put in your 100%, that will show. Mm. I think uh, establish your brand, uh, be, be, be positive and assured about who you want to be in your space and what you want people to say about you because someone is always, people are always watching, basically. So establish your brand and always, always be humble, always. Thank you. For me, it will be stay true to your own journey. Don't compare yourself. I know now we have social media, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, where you see other people living life and you feel like you're way behind. Um, stay true to who you are. Don't go outside of God to get where you need to go. Um, don't end up sleeping around just because you need to get that job. If you are comfortable with the way your life is going and you know that there's a greater power that has your life in, in, in his hands, then you shouldn't worry about how slow you feel you're going or how fast others are going. So ladies, for our closing remarks, I would like you to take me through your Bible verses that took you through your academia or your professional life um, or the process as you were going through your education. What are the verses that carried you through? 
Um, there's a specific verse that I like, it's Ecclesiastics 11 verse 4. It says, those who look at the wind will not sow, and those who look at the rain will not reap. I love it because it says circumstances will never be perfect for you to start. If there's something you need to start, be it a dream, be it a goal, be it starting to work out, or opening a business, circumstances will never be perfect. So you'll have to start either way. Lindy? Um, I think my verse, I have a lot. I've already mentioned one already. Um, it's Isaiah 43 verse 1. He says, this is what the Lord says to you, O Israel. I have called you by name. You are mine. So that on its own, just um, it shows me that God is with me and he knows whatever I am doing because he knows me by name. He even knows the hair that I have right now. So that on its own just gives me such um, joy that my redeemer, my father knows everything about me. Amen. Cesar? For me, it's Proverbs 3. Verses 5 to 6, it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will straighten your path. It's, it sounds so simple, but sometimes it's very hard to do, especially um, not leaning on your own understanding, just trusting God. That's the verse. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us and accepting the invitation. Um, in closing, church... Um, I would like to say the following. As the Kelvin on Athol SDA Church, we are concerned about the high rates of gender-based violence in South Africa. We are saying no, and we will not be silenced. Justice for women. To our fathers, brothers, and our uncles, please fulfill your God-given purpose. Love and protect us. To those who have lost their family members through gender-based violence, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Thank you. Hope to see you next time. Hi there. Why should Father's Day only be on the 20th of June once a year? I'm grateful that I have a father each and every single day of my life. For me, it's Father's Day every day. I'd like to honor my father while he is still alive. He breaks his back for me almost all the time. He buys me what I want and ensures I have food and a roof over my head. He is present all the time when I go to a new grade. He is there to support me through my achievements, be it like schoolwork, sports, or life in general. He is a brother and friend to many. We do not see eye to eye at times, but I will always love him even so. I know he has good intentions about me, and he has my best interest at heart. In all things, he has taught me about God. Proverbs 20, verse 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver or gold. My father may not have all the riches of the world, but he has all the riches that most people desire, like love, caring, and thoughtfulness, and that is my father, and I love him for that. Oh, good, good.
all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I'll be reading um, our offertory reading, and I'm reading from Deuteronomy 28. It reads, If you fully obey the Lord your God, and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flock. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. This is what um, we are promised. This is what we are commanded to do. God requires us to obey him in all that we do, in the way we lead our lives. He requires us to also be obedient with our tithes and our offerings. He requires us to give from the little or much that he has blessed us with. Let us all be faithful in returning our tithes and offerings. Yes, we are not in church, we are at home, but we are still enjoying services and God is blessing us. We have food to eat every single day. We have roofs over our heads. We are blessed in so many ways. Let us not forget God. Um, let us be faithful and continue with our tithe and offerings. Amen. Can we please pray? Let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for reminding us that though much is happening around us, that is chaotic, you are still here with us, blessing us every single day. You have given us so much to be thankful for. You've given us life. You've given us our families, our friends. You've given us food to eat. You've given us clothes to wear. We are warm during this cold winter, Lord. We take none of that for granted, dear God. We thank you so much, Lord, for all your blessings. Please help us to be faithful to you, Lord. May we return our tithes and offerings and stay faithful to you. Please also bless us, Lord. You've promised us if we are obedient to you, you will bestow many blessings upon us. Therefore, we thank you, Lord, and we receive them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you so much for having me this day as we spend the Sabbath together. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of mercy. We thank you so much for this blessed Sabbath where we get to rest our weary souls from the stresses of the week. And we sit at your feet and we feast at your word. We thank you so much for keeping us safe during this pandemic. And we also ask, Lord, that you reach out your healing hand to those that might not be feeling well today. And Lord, we say that, especially on the Sabbath, Lord, may they feel much better. May they feel the Holy Spirit descend and touch them in a special way. Lord, be with us as we're about to enter into this um, divine service message. May your Holy Spirit come down and be with me, your servant, as I'm about to give your children the word. We pray for all of this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I'm going to talk about a topic, or let me say the title of my message is Take Up Space. And I know that this title is not unfamiliar to our young Adventist women's ministries. A phrase that has become popular since Zozi Bini, Miss South Africa 2019, went to Miss World and came back with the cup. It was a big deal for us as South Africans, looking at her with her Chico cut. Others say, Chico cut, ya 20 randa with those kinks and coils, hair that was once said to be uncivilized, hair that was once said to be barbaric and ugly, and now is the one that she wears as she holds her crown. Significantly also is that she is African with that sun-kissed melanin skin she changed the beauty standards forever. She put her foot in the door, and once she was done, she opened it for all of us as African women. Hence the statement, take up space, open doors that were once shut. Talking about shut doors, I take you to the book of Numbers chapter 26. Remember the book, or remember the background before we get to the book of Numbers. Firstly, the children of Israel had been liberated with a mighty hand from Israel by God, the God who hears, the God who sees the suffering of his children and moves and acts in order to deliver them from bondage. When we, after we get from the book of Exodus, we move into the book of Leviticus. Leviticus is where they are given various laws so that they know that they serve a God of honor. I mean, a God of order. But secondly, in the book of, uh, in the book of Leviticus is where they are taught how to worship God from then henceforth. And then we get to the book that we are speaking about today, which is the book of Numbers. And I'm going to begin with chapter 26. Um, so the book of Numbers, there's usually this assumption and generalization that women were not counted in the book of Numbers because back in those days, women were insignificant. But contrary to popular belief, Women and children were not counted in the census because they were counting men for purposes of battle in order to acquire the land of Canaan, the promised land which God had promised them when they were in Egypt in captivity. When we read the book of Numbers chapter 26, it says, Then it came about after the plague that the Lord spoke to Moses and to Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the sons of Israel, from 20 years old and upward, by their father's households, whoever is able to go out to war, 
in Israel. So this just proves what I was saying. After counting how many men were in the 12 tribes of Israel, then another thing had to take place. They had to divide the land according to the families or the tribes that were present. And land was distributed proportionally, as in, or let me say equally, as in the bigger tribes got the bigger size of land and obviously the smaller tribes got the smaller piece of land. Everything was going smoothly with this distribution of land until we get to a shut door. When we get to the book of Numbers chapter 27, it presents to us a shut door. I'm going to read from verse 1 until verse 7, and it reads, Then the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Makir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, came near these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Mogla, Milka, and Tirzah. They stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the leaders and all the congregation at the doorway of the tent of meeting saying, Our father died in the wilderness, yet he was not among the company who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but he died in his own sins and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be withdrawn from amongst his family because he had no son? Give us a position among our father's brothers. Here is the shut door. Zelophehad had no sons. According to the law of those times, land was only given to male heirs. So it's either the land belonged to your husband. And if your husband died, you had to pray to God that you had good sons like the sons of Naomi who would take good care of you and allow you to be part of his household. And if it happened that those sons died, you had to pray to God that you are able to go back as a married woman, as a woman who had children, go back to your father's household. And as we know, generally with the lifespan and how life happens, it's usually rare to go back home and find that your parents are still alive. So you understand how dire the situation was for a woman back in those days. In order to survive, you had to have some male figure in your life who cares enough to allow you into their land for you to have sustenance and shelter over your head. Then these girls or these daughters, despite knowing all of this history, despite knowing all of these laws, come to, jo come to Moses and say, give us the land. In a time where women were downtrodden, in a time where women couldn't do something as simply as testifying before the court of law, because they, they, they said that, Women are uh, natural liars. And they made a practical example by saying, if Sarah had the nerve and the guts to lie to God and say, I did not love, <laughs> we can't trust this gender. <laughs> Despite all of that, they put society's prejudice aside. And they said, Ria kopele, hoya ria ya ria kopele. The children of Israel, when they usually camped in such a situation, they would camp around a circle. So let's say we'd say the tribe of Reuben was in the east. The tribe of Benjamin was in the north and the south. You know, all those different tribes, one by one, around the circle with their little tents. And in the middle 
was the meeting tent, or if we can put it nicely, the tabernacle. And that is where Moses was. That is where the Levites were, the priests, and all the leaders and men in that society in the wilderness. Imagine with me the confidence. Imagine with me, you know, if, you, if, if you're in a, a situation where you're in a circle and you're about to move to the center of that circle, you know that as you step out, nobody is going to miss the scene. Those from the east are busy watching. Where are these girls going? How, I mean, can't they see Moses is busy? Those in the east, those in the west, they were like, we do not care who is watching us, but with all confidence, we are going to move towards that meeting tent because we have something to say to Moses. And there they move and they say, Moses, please give us the land. Even worse, they say, give us the land amongst our father's brothers. Amongst Abu Malume, like you don't understand, I am an African child. You don't just talk to Abu Malume. You don't, you don't just sit next to Malume. It has to be something important. But they are saying that I, I, we request to have land. The same portion that you will give to my uncle, please give it to us for our father's sake. And I want to say this, that if it were according to Moses, I am sure, like, you know, if I could put a bet, like, I, I, I would put a big amount. I am sure that Moses would obviously say no. I mean, traditions of ages, years and years of, of, of this custom. And then you're going to come from nowhere and ask for things that are not for girls. He obviously said no. But these women were adamant. These women were persistent until they were like, you know what, you, you, you know what, Moses? It's fine. We, we we are going to wrestle with you, and if if it doesn't if it doesn't if it doesn't help wrestling with you, then we are going to be like Jacob. We will wrestle with men, and then we will wrestle with God until we conquer. So finally, they say, Moses, we are done having this argument. Please give it to God. Please give it to God. And Moses agreed. And when I saw that Moses agreed during my reading of this text, I was like, good shot. Because you see, when you talk to God, it's not like talking to man. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Therefore, Moses speaks to God about this new and unfamiliar request. And guess what God says in reply? Let's read together the book of Numbers chapter 27, verse 7 and 8. This is God's reply to this new, bizarre, and if I can say brave request. And it reads, the daughters, oh wait, then, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, the daughters of Zelophehad are right in their statements. You shall surely give them a hereditary possession among their father's brothers. And you shall transfer the inheritance of their father to them. And God further says, further you shall speak to the sons of Israel saying, if a man dies and has no son, then you shall transfer his inheritance to his daughter. God said yes. You don't get it. God said yes. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. What is impossible with man is possible with God. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, God says, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. 
yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. God has opened the door. He is aware we have little strength. We've been fighting a lot of battles and we even sometimes feel insignificant and inferior. But he says, even when you feel like you have no strength, I have opened the door. All you need to do is march and go forward. God liberated the daughters of Zelophehad and even made a perpetual law that women from that day onwards had access to land. Before woke women rights, before liberation struggles, before feminist movements and all of that, God had already liberated his daughters since the Old Testament times. Therefore, when I say take up space, I'm saying let no one restrict you because of the color of your skin. Let no one discriminate against you because of the texture of your hair or your gender. Take up space. Own that land. Own that business. Today we say back to Eden. Not only in terms of food and diet, we are saying back to to Eden, the way God created us in the book of Genesis chapter 1, when man and woman were standing together, equally created in the image of God. And he said to both of them that I have given you dominion to rule over the earth and every living thing side by side. God has opened the doors. We'll walk right through them. Take your God-given inheritance, child of God. Take up space as an heir as an, as, and as an heiress of the kingdom of God. With these words, I encourage you to not look down on yourself and to know that whether it's in the corporate space, whether it's in the church, whether it's in your household, God has liberated you. You have God-given potential. You have God-given abilities. The time is now. Society is ready. There is a gap. There is a gap. And it needs only you to fill it. Do not underestimate yourself. Do not undermine yourself. A lot of people will say no. Even Moses, the man of God, the man who spoke to God, will sometimes not understand things like God will. So even when they say no, firstly speak to God and ask him, what do you think of me and the path in which I must trod? And when God says yes, that is more than enough. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, as long as you know that God has said yes, move out into that open door. Take up space, child of God. Rule, have dominion. And most importantly, we are all here for a reason. None of us are here to decorate. So find out what, 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 what goal or what mission or what ministry have you brought me into this earth to give to the world. And please, please, please do it. Do it, despite the fact that you might feel inadequ in inadequate, do it. Because once you do the will of God, your heart will overflow. You will feel contentment. And I've felt it before, and I trust you. Even, I, even my enemy, I am telling them, okay, I don't have much of those. But even I would tell this to an enemy. Once you entrust your life in the arms of God, and you allow him to do with you as he pleases. Ah, nothing compares to that. May you all be blessed. Thank you. And right now we will bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of mercy. We thank you so much for the lessons that we have gleaned from the book of Numbers, chapter 26 and chapter 27. Father, this day we speak to a son, we speak to a daughter of God 
who has felt that they do not deserve a seat at the table. Lord, we, we are asking, Father, that you do not allow society, allow prejudice, allow discrimination, injustice to fill up our minds and fill up our hearts with all these negative thoughts to the point that we forget what you think about us. Father, we pray that we should not underestimate your power to make the, impos to make the impossible possible in our lives. Lord, we thank you so much for this word. And Lord, we pray that right now it seems like a lot of doors have been shut because of the pandemic. Some ways of making money have been stopped because of COVID-19. Um, some doors have been shut because of other various reasons. And we're sitting there at a dead end and we're wondering what to do next. N not knowing that lo and behold, if we could just turn around and stop looking at all these things that say no, no, no unto us. If we turn around and we look at you, we'll actually see that you are standing right there, opening the door wide to say, stop going according to your will and according to your ways and trust my way. Trust my direction. It is much better. Father, we pray that those whose um, streams of income have been cut, that you may open another door, Father, in order for them to provide for their families. We pray that those whom their doors have been shut because of ill health, Father, that you may bestow healing upon them. Lord, we pray for those who, who in their relationships, it seems that the door has been shut for happiness. Father, that you may bring taste into a tasteless situation. Or oh, Father, that you may pick us up and take us out of situations where we were not supposed to be in, this, in the first place. Father, we bring our lives to you and we say, have thine own way. You are the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thy will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. Amen. Oh, Jesus, oh,
be.